Scandals involving progressive Liberal Party ministers and a free national movement candidate seem to dominate headlines this week. And a PLP incumbent candidate appeared to be gravely ill at a major political event this week. We've got those stories and others. I'm your host, Krishna Virgil, and this is the Tribune's Top 5. Reverend Leish Boyd, Bishop of the Anglican Diocese in the Bahamas and the Turks and Caicos, this week spoke out against gutter politics as the country eyes an impending general election. Reverend Boyd denounced the gutter politics and venom associated with the upcoming general election, charging that the practice could hinder upstanding persons seeking to offer themselves for public office in the future. Bishop Boyd, in a pastoral letter to his parishioners and the nation over the current election cycle, said he is personally horrified at the terrible practice of denigrating and maligning others by unscrupulous opponents in the political realm, which he said ultimately discourages some decent people from wanting to serve. He particularly lamented the gutter politics being spewed around in both mainstream and social media, further bemoaning how fake news is propagated as facts and how so many of us are gullible to believe whatever we see that is negative or degrading about others. Rather than demonize political candidates, Bishop Boyd called on voters to discuss the issues, adding, We cannot allow our children to believe that the vast majority of persons serving or desirous of serving in political office do not have integrity or good character. Bishop Boyd's letter released Monday comes as an election cycle that has already been marred with verbal jousting between political parties and at least one confirmed physical altercation between supporters of two of the country's major political parties, the PLP and the FNM. Amid Boyd's call to end gutter politics, Progressive Liberal Party Chairman Bradley Roberts on Tuesday delivered on his promise of a second bombshell, releasing a stinging missive on free national movement candidate Howard Ricky Mackey that outlined allegations of further tax evasion and ownership of a stolen vehicle. Mr. Roberts reiterated his charge that Mr. Mackey is unfit to hold public office, and in making his case claimed that the North Lutheran candidate allegedly owed a little over $21,000 in unpaid license fees to the road traffic department for a fleet of vehicles and has no liability insurance for his coping business nor the licensing required to operate the business. For his part, Mr. Mackey told the Tribune that he did not have time to respond to Mr. Roberts' allegations, which he said he was aware of, and that a response would likely come from his constituency association. A response did not come. Mr. Roberts said, quote, I take no glee in presenting these facts, but was challenged by FNM Chairman Sidney Colley and FNM candidate Howard Ricky Mackey, who urged me to tell it all. It should be abundantly clear to voters of Nahu Luthra that Howard Ricky Mackey is not a fit and proper person to be elected to the House of Assembly. On the matter of the stolen vehicle, Mr. Roberts alleged that a luxury 2014 Infiniti Jeep stolen from Florida in 2013 was found in the possession of Mr. Mackey, driven by him and licensed up to August 2017. Mr. Roberts said the Jeep's vehicle identification number, VIN, was confirmed by Enterprises Holding Rental, EHR, which reported that the vehicle had been rented to a Bohemian woman from Abaco at the time that the theft was reported on December 3, 2013. And as the revelation that Education Minister Jerome Fitzgerald had solicited lucrative contracts from Bahamar was still resounding throughout the country, it was revealed that his mother was the recipient of a contract from NIB several months after the general election in 2012. The National Insurance Board sought simultaneously to make a company owned by a cabinet minister's mother the broker of record for both its group health and property insurance business less than two months after the 2012 general election. Documents obtained by the Tribune show that NIB imposed a Scott Fitzgerald Insurance Brokers and Agents Limited into the existing medical insurance contract for its employees, which was held by BISIC's listed family guardian in late 2012. The company, which is owned by the mother and family of Jerome Fitzgerald, Minister of Education, Science and Technology, was introduced as Group Health Insurance Broker at exactly the same time as NIB tried to give it the same role of its property and casualty business. The commission for insurance brokers is typically 3% of the policy's premium amount, and given the size of NIB's workforce and multi-million dollar property portfolio, A. Scott Fitzgerald, insurance brokers and agents would likely have earned a six-figure sum from these contracts according to industry sources. Incumbent MP Shane Gibson was also the subject of intense criticism after the Tribune reported that Peter Nygaard sent thousands of dollars per month to a Bank of America account belonging to the Labor and National Insurance Minister between August 2011 and January 2013. Documents obtained by the Tribune showed that the payments totaled $94,131.10. Mr. Gibson did not immediately acknowledge that the transactions occurred when he was contacted on Sunday, but after seeing the documents presented to him by the Tribune, he admitted receipt of the funds. 
He claimed the money was used as contribution to his 2012 election campaign and for community initiatives in the Golden Gates constituency such as scholarships to students. The deposits were made once per month in $5,000 tranches between August 4, 2011 when Mr. Gibson was an opposition parliamentarian to January 8, 2013 when Mr. Gibson was a substantive cabinet minister. The documents obtained by the Tribune appeared to be records belonging to Mr. Nygaard, a Canadian fashion mogul who resides in the affluent community of Lyford Key or his associates. 18 of Mr. Nygaard's payments to Mr. Gibson were listed as being for professional services, though one $4,131.10 was listed as being for travel from Nassau to Miami. Mr. Gibson, whose personal files were not the ones the Tribune obtained, could not say what the payment for travel pertained to. Incumbent Bain in Grantstown MP Dr. Bernard Nottage had to be seen by a doctor this week after he was heard to be stumbling and slurring his words at a PLP event on Thursday night. Dr. Nottage, 71, had to be aided on stage by his wife throughout the second half of his presentation, mispronouncing words and having to constantly correct his sentences. Visibly flustered as he spoke to the large crowd of supporters gathered Thursday night, Dr. Nottage was attempting to praise members of the various law enforcement entities and plot the course ahead for the PLP and its fight against crime. However, his dazed demeanor and incoherent speech led many in attendance to question his overall health in the moment. Dr. Nottage was forced to wrap up his speech as the DJ played loud music to drown out his words. Many of Dr. Nottage's colleagues on hand were stunned by what had unfolded and wondered how serious the entire ordeal was. POP Chairman Bradley Roberts told the Tribune that a doctor examined Dr. Nottage at his home shortly after he gave the worrisome performance. He initially told the Tribune that Dr. Nottage had been taken to hospital, but later reported that the Minister of National Security had been examined by a physician at his home. Want to get in on the discussion? Well, here's how you can. Just log on to our website at www.tribune242.com, like us on Facebook, the Tribune News Network, send us a tweet at Tribune242, or subscribe to our YouTube page, Tribune242.